Amanda Freed. I'm Leah Amico. I'm Soraya Flowers. I'm Lovey Jung. I'm Mike Candrea, head softball coach of the women's Olympic softball team. Welcome to Sports School. In these segments, we're going to cover the skills of catching. Catching is a great position. I usually term our catcher as the field general because they're the only position on the field where everything is in front of them. We're going to cover everything from the stance to throwing to blocking to fielding bunts, all the necessary things to make you a better catcher. We'd like to begin by talking about getting into our stance. I'd like to have Taraya here share with us how she gets into her stance and some of the key points that you need to consider. Well, for me, I want to start in an athletic position just like any other position on the field. I want to make sure that I stagger my feet a little bit. I'm right-handed, so my left foot's going to be slightly in front of my right foot. I want to make sure that my feet are a little bit wider than my hips. That way, when I ease into my squat, I have good balance. I want to be able to move side to side to block any balls. And I want to make sure that I'm not falling over forward or backwards and I'm able to receive the pitch. One of the keys to catching is glove work. Um, catchers have to be very, very good at having nice soft hands, but they also must be able to react very quickly to different pitches. So, Toriah, how do you, um, what are some of your keys when it comes to glove work? Well, when I'm in my stance and I'm waiting for the the pitcher to deliver a pitch, I want to make sure that I'm nice and relaxed. I don't want to extend my hand too early. You want to have a little bit of motion so you're ready to react either way. If I know the pitch is coming inside to a right-handed batter, I like to do a little subtle shift and you stick the pitch. You want to make sure on every pitch that you're getting around it. On the inside pitch you want to get around, outside pitch around, up and down. So I, t I usually take a little subtle movement, get around and stick it for the umpire. There's another way that you can do it, is by taking a slight jab step, a, a minor movement, and you still stick the pitch. On offense, we see catchers that sometimes move too soon, and so they kind of, other teams pick up what pitch they're throwing. Right. What is your key to when you're going to make that little subtle movement on the inside pitch or outside pitch? Well, I set up down the middle so I don't give anything away. And as the pitcher is in her motion, I'm going to start to move. I don't want to move around too big behind the plate because I want the umpire to see everything. So you're just going to start. As she's getting into her windup, you're going to make a slight move and stick the pitch for your batter. You also want to make sure that you're keeping your throwing hand behind you. Either you can kind of hold on to your ankle back here or make sure that it's behind your back. You want to make sure that you're not catching a foul tip in the fingers. Troy, you talked about getting around the ball. Can you elaborate on that? I was basically talking about framing. You want to take a borderline pitch, which is a pitcher's pitch, one that's on the black of the plate or just inside the plate in the batter's box. You want to turn that into a strike so that the umpire has no doubts. See, by getting around it, framing, I'm going to catch the outside part of the ball. You want to make sure that you're not taking balls and raking them in. You don't want to catch something in the batter's box that is definitely a ball and try and mix up the umpire. These are the ones that can be a strike and you want to get them called for your pitcher. A major responsibility of catchers is giving signs to the pitcher. Coaches, we urge you to give your catchers a chance to call their own game. Too many times we have catchers that arrive at the college level that have never called their own pitches. And I think we're really doing a disservice to them. There's a lot of different ways that you can start introducing calling the game to your catchers because I think it keeps them in the game. Plus, who has a better view of that hitter than the catcher? So, Taroya, can you give us some tips on how do you give signs to the pitcher? When you're giving signals, this is the time when you want to square up to your pitcher. You don't want to have your legs staggered where the first base coach can see you giving your signs. 
You want to square up to your pitcher, stay nice and relaxed. Your glove hand is either going to rest on your knee to cover the signals from the third base coach or to the side and just open up your glove so they can't see anything. Your throwing hand is just going to rest on the crease of your, your hip and your thigh. All you're going to do is drop down numbers. You don't want to get too low where somebody behind you can see your signals and you don't want to get too far in front of you where the whole world can see everything. You want to make sure that you're still kind of open so your middle infielders can see your signals and just stay right here nice and relaxed. The next area we're going to talk about is throwing. And throwing in a catcher's position becomes very important because usually we're throwing to a base when a runner is stealing. So we want to be very efficient in two areas. Number one, we want to make sure that we have a nice short arm circle. In throwing mechanics, we talked about how important the arm circle is. Well, as a catcher, this is one time that we want to actually catch the ball and rake it toward our ear as quick as possible because we want to keep a nice short arm circle. The second thing is footwork. Our footwork behind the plate has to be efficient. It has to be quick and efficient. There's two types of ways that most catchers will transfer the ball and the ball from their glove to their throwing hand and their footwork. The first is by replacing their feet. And if we just kind of draw an L in front of Taraya, what you're going to see is she's going to replace her feet and she's going to end up stepping in that L position. And this is a very common way for young catchers that don't have a real strong arm. If the ball happens to take her to her throwing side, then obviously she can step with her right foot and turn and throw. Again, the key is to make sure she gets her hips and shoulders squared to the target. Now, once they develop a stronger arm, the quickest and most efficient way to get rid of the ball is just by loading their weight on the inside of their back leg. So we're going to have Tariah demonstrate she's going to catch without taking a step, load, and get in a good throwing position. This takes some strength. But the other key is when you're throwing as a catcher, you need to make sure that you release your backside. A lot of young catchers will have a tendency to throw and leave their backside back and not really follow through. We want to make sure as a catcher that we release our backside and we force ourselves to follow through with the right side of our body. Let's have Tariah demonstrate the entire technique. Very good. The other thing as a young catcher is make sure you get used to throwing with your mask on. Too many times I watch young kids practice and they've got their mask off, they're taking steps forward before they throw, and it's not really game-like. So try to make your practice as game-like as possible. Keep a mask on, force yourself to use good footwork, and then you can throw out any runner that tries to steal on you. Another important responsibility of our catcher is becoming a fielder in bunt situation, fielding bunts out in front of the plate. We love to have catchers that are quick, that can get out of the squad very quickly, because this is an easier play for the catcher moving out toward first base than it is a fielder moving away from first. There's two techniques that we use in fielding bunts, and I'm going to have Taraya demonstrate those two techniques. And a ball that's down the middle of the field or to the right side, you want to make sure that you do all your footwork, all your work ahead of time. You want to get around the ball. You don't want to pick up the ball and move towards first. So I'm going to jump out as fast as I can and get all the way around it. Once I'm here, I'm going to use a scooping technique. I want to make sure that I pick it up with two hands. With the ball spinning, you don't want to barehand it and it might squeeze out. So you want to make sure that you're quick, come out of the squat, I'm going to get around it and make my throw. Make sure you follow through. On a ball down the third baseline, you're going to take a more direct approach. I'm going to straight at it, set my right foot by it with my back towards first base and spin around. So I'm going to come out, right foot down, and I'm going to spin, making sure that I always follow through. The next skill that we'd like to cover with the catching position is receiving throws from the outfield. Now this can become very important because obviously 
when you're making a play at home plate, we're either going to make the tag and make the out, or we're going to give up a run. So there's some very key points on re receiving throws from the outfield. We're going to cover positioning, and then we're going to cover securing the ball and how we block the plate. So I'm going to ask Tariah here to demonstrate and talk to you about how she sets up as the ball's coming from the outfield. Well, <clears throat> as a catcher and the runner's coming in, you, you have to first concentrate on the ball. Make sure that you're squared up to wherever the ball's coming. If the ball's coming from right field, I have to catch the ball first before I can make a tag. So I'm going to square up to each of my outfielders and be ready for the play. If I'm receiving the ball from center or left, I can go ahead and, and, and start cheating a little bit. I'm going to make sure that my left foot is pointing up the third baseline. That way, if a runner does slide into me, my knee will give. You don't want to open up to the backstop, so if a runner runs into you, you can do some damage to your knee. You want to make sure that you're squaring up, and once you receive the ball and you have it in your glove, then you drop down with your right knee and make the tag. You want to make sure that you secure the ball first. Now you notice there, Tariah had her had the ball in her throwing hand in the glove. And I think that's really important for young players, is you want to make sure that you secure that tag with two hands instead of trying to tag with just the glove, because that's how the ball is kicked out of the glove and you give up easy runs. There's two types of balls that are going to be thrown in from home plate. One is a ball that's all the way in the air, where the ball doesn't bounce. And the second is maybe a one or two hopper that comes to home plate. If the ball comes directly from the fielder in the air, then we get in a good receiving position. Remember, we talked about keeping our thumbs up, which allows us to make an easy adjustment. But the tough one sometimes is that one hopper or that two hopper. And now the catcher's got to become an infielder. Uh, Tariah, what are some of your keys when the ball's on the ground and you're trying to receive that throw very quickly and making a tag all at the same time? I want to make sure that I stay low just like an infielder. I want to be able to react up. It's harder to react with your glove up high and go low. So I'm going to stay low, just like an infielder, and wait for that last hop. So once that last hop gets there, then I can grab the ball, make sure it's secure in my glove, and go for the block. In reviewing the catching position, we've covered basic stance. We've covered glove work. We've covered throwing mechanics, bunts, and receiving throws. And I think it's very important that we understand some key parts about playing this position. This can be a lot of fun. It's the only position that you get to wear all this fancy gear, but it's also a lot of work. So remember, in the stance, make sure that you're in an athletic position. Make sure you're able to move. Remember when we talked about receiving throws. We want to make sure we protect that throwing hand. We want to have nice, soft hands. And when we talked about framing, what pitches do we frame? We frame borderline pitches. We don't try to rake balls that are in the batter's box to try to make those strikes. We talked about fielding. We talked about getting around the ball or ball down a third base line, turning our back. And very importantly, we talked about becoming a fielder, trying to protect our domain, which is home plate. And Tariah, what were some of the keys on fielding from the uh, outfield. Always make sure that you're facing your outfielder. Go ahead and score up to them and stay low. Stay athletic. Be able to move around. It's a lot of fun to play the catcher's position. But remember, you've got to work hard and always, if you can, get used to wearing a mask. Okay? Because you sometimes in a game you don't, can't afford to take the time to take off that mask. So wear the mask, wear it with pride, and have fun and work hard.